is up guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. So this video I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about off-season supplementation and what I use in my arsenal for supplementation and nutrition as I'm going into my off-season. As I noticed a lot of people get a little bit confused on what they feel like they need in their arsenal to help them with you know growing new muscle um, help with recovery to get stronger and all things like that and i feel like a lot of people get a bit confused and start buying supplements that are not necessarily needed when it comes to the off season so as you can see behind me i have an array of all different supplementations vitamins and nutrition and this is pretty much everything here that i mainly focus on when it comes to my off season so i'm going to pretty much just give a rundown of everything that i have here and you know, show you guys what I use for supplementation, nutrition, and vitamins in my off season. If you guys are new around here on the YouTube channel, I've literally just wrapped up my first competition of 2017. We're exactly four weeks, uh, yeah, four weeks today post competition. So if you guys want to check out that full series, I recorded everything on the YouTube channel. There's a playlist down below in the description. You can head over there and check out everything from day one leading right up to show day, and it talks everything about nutrition supplements training workouts posing everything that revolves around a prep and what I did in my prep series so if you want to check that out feel free to go check out the link in the description below so the reason why I wanted to do this video is like I said earlier I feel like a lot of people get confused when it comes down to supplements and what should you use and as you'll notice behind me other than the nutrition stuff and the vitamins I don't actually have a great deal of supplements in my arsenal now when I go into a prep, I'll probably increase my supplements that I'll use because I'm going further into a calorie deficit. My body is going to get fatigued a lot quicker. It's going to need some help in aiding with recovery, um, strength, growth, and repairing all the muscles and things like that. So when I'm in the middle of prep, calories are low and I'm really you know, pushing my body, that is when my supplements will be a little bit higher. Like I'll have more supplements in my arsenal stack. But as we go into off season, I like to decrease my supplements and focus more on nutrition. As we go into the off season, we all know it's about growing. So we're gonna be putting our bodies into a calorie surplus and the main focus should be your nutrition and your macros. You know, getting good carbohydrates in, fats, proteins, but also good micronutrients as well with your fiber, fruit, and vegetables. Now, if you have all those in your arsenal stack in your off season, you shouldn't need to worry that much with your supplementation because everything in those micronutrients and macronutrients is gonna give everything that you need for strength, fuel, energy, recovery, repairing of the muscle tissue, Overall, it'll just give you everything that the supplements will do also. But as we go into a prep, we don't have a great variety of macros and micronutrients because we're putting our body into our calorie deficit. That is why we use supplements because they will supplement for the foods that we're not putting into our body because we have to put that body into a calorie deficit. So starting off with the main stuff that you guys want to know, the supplements. So as you can see here, this is pretty much the supplements that I will use in my arsenal stack now everything you see here i'll have here in my um prep series and also in my off season so i'll use this pretty much 365 days of the year and give or take some things will increase some things will decrease but starting with some of the basic stuff that everyone knows creatine monohydrate now i'll always keep this in and i've used this right into my prep as well most people were asking did you um, chuck out your creatine in your prep series? I was using creatine right up till show day. People think about water retention. Does creatine make you hold on to water? To me, in my opinion, it's all a load of, uh, like, it's, it's crap. It's creatine monohydrate, I'll use this all year round. Five grams every single day. That's all you'll need. Now, another one that most people love using nowadays, as you'll see, everyone going into their gym sessions, they always have that bottle with them with a beautiful colour, whether it be red, blue, green, yellow, whatever it is. That's normally some sort of BCAs or essential amino acids. Now, here I have some BCAs from uh, my protein, which is the watermelon flavour. I won't really use as much in my off season because again, BCAAs are amino acids. You can find amino acids in protein sources like chicken, eggs, turkey, and things like that. So as I'm going into my off season, I'm getting a lot more, you know, meats in and proteins from whole foods that I won't necessarily need to worry about BCAAs. I'll use these in my prep in my intro workout, mainly because I'm putting my body into a calorie deficit. I'm not getting a great deal of uh, like 
uh, protein sources in from uh, animals like the chickens, the eggs, etc. So because I'm not getting that uh, amount that my body will need from the whole foods, I will supplement that with some essential amino acids just to help keep protein synthesis and to keep my body anabolic. But in the off season, I won't worry as much. All right, so now moving on to one of the most popular supplements that everybody craves about nowadays, pre-workouts. So if you guys have been a loyal subscriber, you will know that I'm a big advocate of Storm Sports Stimimax and Vascumax. Now, if you are new around here, both of these are probably one of the best pre-workouts in the industry at the moment. You have a Stimimax, which is obviously by the title of it, a stimulant-based pre-workout. So if you're somebody that craves those caffeines and uh, you know that energy buzz that most people do want to get out of their pre-workouts, Stimimax is probably the best option for you guys. And they have just brought out a new flavor, if you are interested, which is fruit salad. The other flavor they do have is cola. Personally, I like the cola, but the fruit salad is just as nice. So the other one that Strong Sports has is Vascumax, which is V3. So that means there's three version of this, the Vascumax, Vascumax V2, and Vascumax V3. Now this is a non-stimulant based pre-workout. All this pretty much does is helps give you that focus and give you those crazy pumps during your workout, but without those crazy stimulants that some people you know just don't really want to have in their pre-workout. So really ideal, this is for people that maybe train later in the evenings, that don't really want to have that caffeine and be up late at night, or just for somebody that's sensitive to caffeine altogether. So Vascumax will be the best option for that. And that is pretty much all the pre-workouts I will use. I will use those on days like if my energy levels are very, very low, if I've had a poor night's sleep, if I've had a long day at work, I'll use a Stimimax just to help give me that extra boost. Other than that, I'll only use Vascumax or just a normal standard coffee. That's pretty much all I need. Now, as it comes into the off season, there's another hype about intra workouts and these carb powders. A lot of people want to start getting intra workouts in with some sort of carb powder forms and things like that. I'm not much of an advocate about using intra carbohydrates. I just don't really feel like it's necessary. I feel like I get enough carbohydrates, uh, you know, throughout the day in my pre workout meal, the day before, and in my post workout meal that I don't really need to get carbs in an intra workout to give me that extra boost in my workout. But if I feel like I need to get more carbs in my off season, pretty much just to help me grow and just to get more calories in, I will chuck in some sort of carbohydrates in my intra workout only because I may need more calories to get in and I can get in a liquid form which would be easier for me to digest and it just adds up on the calories. So what I would use for an intra workout is this at the moment which is Intra amino acids. So this is a blend of essential amino acids and BCAs and also L-glutamine. So this is what I would use in my intra workout stack. And along with this, I would use for my car powder, maltodextrin. Now I personally like using this one because it digests and I don't get a great deal of bloat. And I'll probably get around about 20 grams in my intra workout and that's about it. Some people like to use 60 to 80 grams of carbohydrates from a car powder. I think personally enough would be 20 to 30 grams max. That's all you'll need in my opinion. And lastly, the only other supplements that I'll use in my off season is one of the most common supplements that you always find in everybody's arsenal is some sort of whey protein. So I have two forms here. I have the impact whey isolate and I have the impact whey protein. The only difference is the isolate has a little bit less calories, carbs, fats, and sugar. Now, the reason why I have that is because that is what I was using in my prep series, but because I have some left over, I'm pretty much just using it just for the sake of it. But once that's all gone, I will then start using the impact whey protein. There's nothing majorly different between the two, simply then this one has a little bit more calories, a little bit more carbohydrates, fats, and sugars. So it's all calories when off season, we're trying to grow, so there's no harm in getting this in. I'm pretty much just using the isolate way now, just to get it gone with, and once that's done, I'll move on to the next pack. But other than that, that's pretty much all the supplements I will use in my off season. I will use nothing else. I focus more on the nutrition, and that is what I'm gonna show you guys next. So nutrition is the most important key to grow it in the off season, regardless of anything else with your training, your cardio, your sleep, your recovery. This is what is going to get you the results. 
your nutrition, your macronutrients and your micronutrients. As I said earlier, your carbs, fats and proteins and all your fibers from fruit, veg, etc. So here is some of the stuff that I will use in my off season. Now, we all know everyone is an individual. When it comes down to the off season, their structure that they will use when it comes to the diet will vary from person to person. Some will use high uh, amount of fats just because it's more of a calorie dense food and they can get more calories from it. Some will probably use just higher carbs. Some will maybe use less carbs, moderate fats, high protein. It just works down to the individual and how you respond best from the foods. For me, I go for more of a simple bro food uh, diet plan when it comes to my off season. So that means I'll use a high amount of protein and a high amount of carbohydrates in my diet. And I'll keep my fats very low to around about 20, maybe 30 grams maximum, which I'll probably chuck in my last meal. So my fats, we'll get that out of the way with now. Fats will come from things like red meat. I'll normally have steak, um, minced beef, uh, mackerel. It may be whole eggs with the yolk. Other than that, I'll use things like your standard peanut butter, a good selection of nuts. So here I have mixed nuts here, which has uh, almond nuts, walnuts, cashew, and Brazil nuts. They're all just the same. They give you uh, a good amount of omega 3s and essential fatty acids. So that's what I like to use. Normally it'll be almond nuts. They're one of my favorites. Or another one, which is almond butter. Pretty much the same as peanut butter, but it's just almonds instead. So I'll use these as my fatty acids, but again, normally I'll have steak as my last meal, and that's pretty much all my fats that I'll get in. Other than that, it'll be, you know, very of them, and that just depends on where I am on the day. If I'm tired, if I can't be bothered to cook a steak, I'll just use some almond butter or some nuts, which is a little bit easier and a little bit quicker to get in to my last meal of the night. But normally it would always be some sort of red meat. So now we're gonna move on to the carbohydrates. I'm a big advocate of using carbohydrates to grow in my off season. So here we just have some of the bro foods that a lot of bodybuilders will use with some quayer oats. You can use some standard uh, porridge oats or whatever you prefer. Um, some people like to use cornflakes, Weetabix, um, Rice Krispies, things like that. I personally like to use oats because I just really enjoy it, my bowl of oats. Or an alternative which I used in my prep series is ground of rice, also known as cream of rice, which is just a little bit um, less fiber than the oats, and for some people, it may digest a little bit easier and sit in the stomach a lot easier. So if you're one of these people that have oats and you're finding difficulty digesting those oats or you're feeling bloated afterwards, maybe give ground of rice a try, or if you're from America, use cream of rice, you can use grits or things like that, or use uh, you know other alternatives, like I said, with the cereals. You can use uh, Special K, Weetabix, uh, shredded wheat, things like that. Just find the food source that responds best with your body and digests nicely. For me, it's either ground of rice or some sort of quater oats. And then it will then come to more simple sugars. So I'll have this around my pre-workout meals, sometimes my post-workout meal as well. Now I usually get like a banana in in my pre-workout meals, but I'm not one to use a lot of fruit in my diet. Now there's no specific reason why. I just, you know, I'm pretty lazy. I can't be bothered to get fruits in. So I'll use something a little bit simpler and that will be strawberry jam. I may even use like Haribo or just simple sugar that I'll probably sprinkle a bit on my oats and that's where I'll get my simple sugars from. I know most people are probably raving about I need to get more fruit in to keep my body more healthy. It's just a lot of the fruits, they go off very quick and if you have to buy them every single day, that could be very costly and then you know you have to try and get them in really quickly otherwise they're just gonna go off or out of date and then you have to bin them. So I like to use things that don't go out of date as quick. So things like just simple sugar, Haribo sweets or jam, which I'll probably use uh, the most common one. These don't go off as bad and they're not as you know costly uh, like uh, fruit would be. So that's what I use for my simple sugars. There are of course other carb sources that I would use. Things like rice, um, pasta, potatoes, um, sweet potato, yams if I ever have them. You know, anything like these, any carb sources I'll chuck in. But I normally keep everything as basic and simple as possible. So it'll normally be just oats, ground of rice, rice, and potatoes. That's pretty much all the carb sources that I'll use. Or maybe here and there I'll use like rice cakes or cereals for my carbohydrates slash simple sugars. Other than that, I won't use nothing else just because I like to keep my carb sources 
small as possible, but I'll just increase the volume depending on what my macros need to be, give or take on the day. As most of you guys will know, everyone knows what the standard proteins are to use in a bodybuilding diet. So I have here the traditional eggs. So I use large eggs, which I always have in my morning breakfast and then sometimes in my last meal of the night. The other protein sources I'll choose will be the impact ways. I'll have um, turkey, I'll have uh, minced beef, steak, chicken, um, turkey rashers, so like a turkey bacon, um, tuna, um, salmon, all these other sources will be the protein sources that I like to use in my off season. Again, I vary that on the day, depending on where I am, what I'm doing with work, what I have cooked, what I have on me available, but this will just vary day to day. So normally the standard stuff that I'll have on a daily basis will be your things like eggs, tuna, whey protein and chicken which I'll pretty much have every single day. Other things I'll chuck in here and there if I have it cooked or if I have time to cook it but that's pretty much it. Now another thing that I said that you really need to focus on other than your macronutrients is your micronutrients. So many people when it comes to the off season they tend to decrease their fiber intake. So things like vegetables, their broccoli, carrots, sweet corn, um, cauliflower, lettuce from salads, cucumber, all things like this, people start to neglect that a lot more when they go into off season, which I can understand because we're getting a vast amount of calories in from other sources of foods with our carbohydrates and proteins, which is making us full already, but we still need those fibers in for good digestion and just for overall health. So what I like to use, other than using things like broccoli and mixed vegetables, which I have my sweet corn, peas, carrots, um, runner beans and things like that in it, I like to use fibers such as chickpeas, which I normally have in my breakfast. I'll put this on top of my eggs or some good old traditional Heinz beans. Now this one here is a standard one. Normally I'll use a less sugar and less salt one just because it's got a little bit less sugar in them. But if I don't, I'll just use your standard Heinz bean which has a good amount of fiber. So, so that's why I always say it's really key not to focus on just your macronutrients, which so many people do when it comes to the off season. When it comes to the off season, you need to make sure you have good health as well and it, it will help with your digestion. So get your broccoli in, get your green veg in, you know, get all the fiber in as you can uh, as you grow into your off season. It's really key, really uh, vital, and it will help with your growth and recovery as well. So make sure you focus on your macronutrients and also your micronutrients. Macronutrients. All right, so lastly, just to finish it off with all my vitamins that I take, these are not as important to be having in your arsenal in the off season, but this is just something I want to chuck in there for you guys that are interested to see what vitamins that I use. So I'm pretty much just going to show you some of the most important ones that I always like to use all year round, which will be some omega-3 fish oils. I normally get these in the morning and in my last meal of the day. We've got some vitamin D. Glucosamine sulfate, mold vitamins and iron. We have some chewable vitamin C. Sometimes I have the water dissolvable ones as well, which I'll stick into a cup and I'll have that with my morning breakfast. If I don't have them, I'll have these chewable ones, which I can just chuck in my mouth, eat them, and I still get my vitamin C in. And they are 1,000 milligrams per um, tablet, which is ideal. Normally I'll get two of those in, which is around 2,000 milligrams of uh, vitamin C. I've also got some fluoroxid acid. I'll get one in the morning and then again one in the evening. Some more daily vitamins. Also we've got some vitamin B complex. And also we have some evening primrose oil which I love having at the moment. Along with my Omega Freeze, I'll make sure every single day I'll have these two vitamin supplements in my stack all year round no matter what. Some of the other stuff, if I run out of it, I won't worry as much. But these I'll always make sure every single day I always get these in without fail. Lastly, my last supplement I have, which is a new one that I've been using, is the Berberine Plus. Now, most of you guys will probably know from the previous video I talked about this, but this is a new supplement that I chucked in from post-competition. Main reason is because it's been helping with insulin sensitivity. It also helps with immune support and it also supports healthy lip type levels. So the main focus why I've been getting this in is to help with my insulin sensitivity. As we've come out of competition, I've started to increase my carbohydrates. Insulin is gonna be all over the place. These help control the insulin levels and the insulin sensitivity, which is a great supplement to use, especially if you just come out of a competition. Other than that, you don't really need to be getting that in there. So there you go guys, that is everything that I use in my off season from my nutrition, my vitamins and supplements. And as you can see, 
Nutrition is always my key and I always tell everybody out there, including my clients, make your nutrition your main priority. Nutrition will come before anything. You know, if you're dieting, you can't outwork a bad diet. So you always need to make sure your nutrition is on point before anything else. After you've got that on point, then start thinking of other things like your vitamins, your fiber and bits and pieces like that. And then you can start adding in supplementations if needed. But really, supplements are not majorly needed. Other than your standard stuff, like some amino acids, if you're putting your body into a calorie deficit, if you're looking to put some more calories into your body in the off season, some car powder with a mulch reduction or a mass gainer is another alternative that you can use. Pre-workouts, again, you don't really need those in your stack, but if you are somebody who just likes to use them, or you're somebody who trains late in the evening and you need that little bit edge, uh, extra boost without the stimulants, a pre-workout is an ideal thing to use, but really, a standard coffee is more than enough for stimulants and to give you that boost that you need for a good workout. And then your standard whey proteins, just because if you can't get to any other protein sources like eggs, chicken, or things like that, you can just chuck that into a shake and there you go, you have your protein from that whey powder. So other than that, that's pretty much it. I hope you did enjoy this video. I hope you guys, you know, learned a little bit more about the off-season supplementations and what I like to use in my off-season and what you need to help you get your results when it comes to off-season to grow and get that optimal you know results that you're looking for so if you did enjoy this video if it did help you out please let me know by dropping a comment down below also give this video a big like if you are new around here make sure you stick around by subscribing to the youtube channel there's plenty more videos to come with daily life videos of what i get up to you can see everything i use with nutrition with my actual meals that i have so stick around by subscribing i'll see you guys on the next video other than that stay safe as always and make it happen Keep chasing shadows, they're always haunting me But I